Hi, welcome to this uh, new installed Arch Linux version 1904, so April 2019. And this video is all about what you do after a clean installation of Arch Linux. I've been listening to some YouTube um, tutorials and people working on, on Arch Linux and on, on general on Linux, and they are always busy installing their um, settings and their configurations and all of that. You can make it easy if you make your Linux work for you. So I'm gonna show you what my workflow is. I'm not gonna use an external hard disk or even an internal one or a USB. I am using the cloud, GitHub to be precise. So, and also um, one, um, not OneDrive, but Google Drive. I use that one as well. You'll see in a bit. So. This is a clean installation. What you do, you do after a clean installation, you see that there is an update. So fine, let's update the system. If the mirrors are slow, you know there are aliases called mirror, mirror S and so on. You type alias in the terminal and you see it. So after the creation of the ISO, we have been busy and will stay busy making new packages for Arch Linux. This is Arch Linux that you're updating and all the rest you're updating here are Arch Linux packages. So let's do that first. I also see that there is a Linux 5.0.6 in here. So basically this is an SSD, not a virtual box. I should reboot because a new kernel is coming in. That's one of the rules I have in my mind. Systemd and Linux reboot and see if the new Linux kernel applies. So that's updating your system. It's nothing new there. So how do I, what, what I do, what do I do after clean installation? So I'm going to start control alt V Vivaldi don't want a password. So I'm say continue. And then in the meantime, let's tell him to check out if there are any packages from AUR that can be updated and Vivaldi will be downloaded and installed. So that's good as well. What I've done, uh, most of the people I believe have a Gmail account. You have there a G drive, a Google drive. And on the Google drive, I have scripts ready. And the scripts so are located on uh, my drive. And what I've done is I've made a shared link to that particular tar GZ. And with Bitly, you can paste the link to shorten it and have an account here. And what I made in bitly.com is a nice, beautiful uh, URL that can always type in on all the systems I visit because we have 13 desktops to install Arch Linux B, then an Arch Linux and Arch Linux D. So 15 desktops every month, I have to install them, test them out, but I get my stuff in. What is my stuff? Let's go and have a look. So I have this URL that's made specifically for me. It might break in the future, but this is the URL that's working for today. But you can use it and reuse it. No problem there, but uh, it might break and, and, and it's not the point to actually um, use these. You can for a start, but you have to write your scripts yourself. So this is a particular file on my OneDrive. Uh, sorry, again, Google Drive, and then download. Always save it, saved. All right, we have something. Let's have a look. We've all in the meantime installed. This system is up to date. Well, I was thinking if you really wanna be up to date, you go to the bin, you stay rolling and check out these guys. But this was already a 1904. So I don't need to run this guy. So just showing you that if you stay rolling, those are the folders and the files to run. So not booting since I'm recording, but there is a new kernel in. This is still the old kernel. And uh, we're going to have a look. What did I download? Control H, downloads, right mouse click, extract here. This can go, get started. And these are the stuff that I installed that I use on every, on the 50 ISOs I talked about, and then the minimal ones, another 13, we're talking about 28 
installations altogether. Always this one URL, and then I kickstart the installation. Now, if I want to have an installation that's more permanent, let's say this SSD is going to be um, a bigger installation, then I'll use the start here. But most of the time, I'll use the minimal start here. So it's less um, downloads, less GitHub syncs, basically, less Git pulls. So this application or this, uh, well, it's actually an application, it's a script that became a application that I can run is going to do the things that I would normally do in a terminal. Update the system. This says update the system and I won't, don't need to ask me, yes, do you want to update? I always say no confirm, so I don't have to do that. So I've done everything like this. These guys have done, this is update and this is PKSYOA. But then things start to be different. Then you install an application to uh, keep track of all your passwords. So every website has a login and a password and this particular uh, application is going to keep track of that. So that's easy, that's, that's uh, efficient, right? Then these guys, let's move this over here. So you take from these videos what you like. If you say, oh, that's convenient, I want to have that too, you just copy paste. What I have in here is copy everything that's called Arc Linux. So these guys will be copied over and will be copied over to my home directory. So I don't have to do it myself. This is going to be copy pasted here. And in here are lots of scripts to update. So to, to get my stuff and to push again to the internet. And the same applies for these guys. All scripts that I use to maintain all these GitHubs. And the same here, getting stuff and, and replacing stuff and all that scripts I use. And then the data things. So update my personal Eric Dubois GitHubs. These are the Arc Linux GitHubs and these are the mine. So Nemesis in, is in here, for instance. And I always have my logo because if you want to have an account somewhere, sometimes you need to upload your logo yourself and it's not via Gravatar or something. So I have it. And if Plasma is um, important as when I'm on there, I can add some more stuff if I want to. The virtual box, virtual machine. So there is nothing installed yet, but I already have a template ready. So this is already themed and tweaked and, and, and done for, for my uh, memory and such and all the settings that I like are in there. So the only thing it's gonna do is copy paste it over. So lots of information. Um, but it's all done with the system. The, the, the script runs it. I can walk away and everything will be just fine. So he's going to copy paste everything over this as well. Copy paste it over. Then this one means make it executable. So everything that's inside any of these article Linux stuff that I just copy paste it over, make them executable just to be sure that they are. Sometimes we forget. So that's interesting to, to have a quick fix here. And then it says go inside data. And maybe this is the time to launch this thing while we talk further. So this guy goes up here, right mouse click, open terminal, and that guy goes down here. I'm gonna say do an installation. Um, get started, correct. Let's have a look. Okay, go down up here. I've already done it, I suppose. I have done it. So that's good. It's educational. So right mouse click and then you have um, make executable. That's one thing. So we've made a little custom action. But if you don't have that on an Arch Linux system, for instance, then you go to permissions, allow this file to run as program. And now I can actually run it. So I'm gonna make pause the video. I'm going to make sure that next time I use it, that I have an executable there. All right, that's done. Let's boot it up. 
So what is it going to do? It's going to make sure you update. So whether you type this manually in your terminal or whether you type in a script and just run it, it's going to be the same thing. There is a W action D that we can get rid of as well. That's true. Last pass is installed. That's this one. Going over the course. So this has been copy pasted over. Let's have a look. Yes, all the files are here, the folders and the files. And then it's going inside data as this line. So whatever you want to do, change directory and go inside here. And then he wants to go to data Arc Linux. Let's have a look. What is he doing? Oh yeah. So inside data is going to go Arc Linux. And these are the scripts that I use after an installation. You know, and you can search this name Nemesis on, or well, arclinuxd.com, arclinux.com, YouTube, Eric Dubois maybe. Uh, I mean, the Nemesis name is is uh, everywhere. The only thing, the only reason why it's there, is because we all want, you want it, I want it, to have more software or to have less software, or to have our personal settings the way we like it. So. Either you do everything manually all the time, every time on the 28 ISOs in my case, or I make a script that does it for me. So basically what I've now done, I've, I've told this system here, this minimal start, go inside a folder called Arclinx Nemesis. First download it, of course. So git clone is this line here. Get it. Git clone it. Then change directory and run one, run two, run three, run four, one five, etc. That's all I do. Just say run this and run that and I just walk away. But this is, um, I've made some adaptations or changes and that's the fun of making a script like this. Each time there is a new ISO, I'll have a look at it. Is it still okay? Can I improve it? Can I add something? Because you always have ideas and what ifs and your script becomes better and better every month. So, um, so he's going to install the core software, which means he's going to install Flameshot. Discord, it's not on the ISO. So the things I install now are things that I will not push onto the people. So if you want to have Discord, you like Discord, you want to use Discord, you can, and I install it afterwards. Dropbox the same, nobody, well, not everybody will use Dropbox. I use Dropbox for our variety. Deskstopper.co is linked to Dropbox and with a variety. So it's installed. All the wallpapers are around 2,500, maybe 3,000 wallpapers are on there. Screen fetch is installed. Spotify, I pay for it. I don't assume you or I don't uh, want you to pay for it, so I won't, will not install it on an ISO, right? We're not push software onto people. So we install it later. Telegram is uh, becoming more and more our way to communicate in our Linux team, just the team, uh, nobody else. And so that's an application we have around. InSync is again Google Drive, but an application to sync, but I pay for it. So it's a paid software, I'm not gonna push it on the ISO. So all the stuff that I need, that I want to work, will be applied later. And that's the Nemesis thing. MPD, I see here. NCMPCP, suppose. Where are you? Here he is. NCMPCPP, great name. Radio tray for some music, if I wanted to. Everything still looks normal. Scrolling. Radio tray is here, is installed now. Has been installed. Indeed, uh, the Platinum Search Rubin is a very small program, but so powerful to search 
for content inside a file and it's now included on the ISO because of well its sheer size it's, it's nothing it's like uh, if you know catfish well catfish can look inside uh, could look inside can look inside but sometimes it fails so I went over to look for something else and the platinum search pin is my uh, way this these days to figure out where in Article Linux did I have a reference to Google Plus and kill all these lines because Google Plus does not exist anymore. Just an example, what I just did a few hours ago. What's seeing? So WhatsApp is installed to keep track with, uh, well, to keep in contact with people. VirtualBox, well, not beyond the ISO, but well, if you want to have it, you can install it, right? So here it is, it's installed now. Vivaldi White Fine is for YouTube, to watch YouTube and also to watch Netflix, for instance. But who has Netflix? So we will not push it on the ISO. Here we are making sure that the icons are fixed. So the hard code fixer. Our Intel U code updating. Fix done. And here the fun stuff starts. So the ASCII Aquarium. Let's go over them. See Matrix is here. Cool Retro is here. Cow Fortune is here. Figlet is here. So that's the script, the fun script. If you want to know what it is, have a look at arclinks.com. Type in fun script. And then there are lots of images to see what all these things are. Ranger is here. SL or locomotive. The pipes. Everything is installed, no errors here. Boxes is installed, Kava is installed. After a while, you'll see the errors like me. Kava is here. CPU fetch. It's been a while since I've tested it. So let's test it. CPU fetch. This is CPU fetch. So you see some more information these things then about your CPU, the cache. All right, scrolling on. Curse radio is installed. Have a look at it. Code top is nice. Have a look at it. There is a video just about the fun script. So you can have a look at all these things before installing it. Toilet. That's not what you think it is. Slurm. TTY clock. Installed. U fetch is installed. I'm really going to draw every little detail since I've changed my scripts. And here we are somewhere else. So fun apps have been installed. So this thing is the end. Then it goes to the personal. There is also a personal folder. And inside the personal folder, there are new numbers. There is something new I've changed. So this goes from 100 to, well, actually 899 or something. And in the personal, we start with 900 and so on. Okay, so folders created. You install folders, you install bookmarks, personal settings, Firefox settings. So if you can't read the text because of your choice to go for our dark, in dark themes, we have this fix for Firefox anyway. Screenshots, fixing, fixing icons. This is new. Um, I wanted to auto start applications rather than being on Qtile, BSPWM, 13 desktops, right? But they all work with the same thing. Put your .desktop file in your home directory, .config, auto start, and it will auto start. Right, so Discord needs to be there, Telegram needs to be there, InSync needs to be there, Variety is there already. already. So the things that I want to run on, on every desktop, I'll put them, I've put them in a little folder up here, how to start and everything is going to be just copy paste it over, also what CIC. And that's so easy, right? Why do this manually? Why figure out any, whether if you're on Mate, where do I auto start stuff? Just make sure that the applications you want to auto start 
are basically in control H config auto start. That's it. Put them in here and they auto start next time you reboot, of course. So that's new. All the rest is normally you would recognize if you already have used um, this Nemesis script. This is maybe new since um, Telegram is, um, well, new since a month or two maybe ago. And this tree icon was, was blue, I think it was. And we didn't like anything blue since everything is white in our tray. So I've made a script to fix this blue tray icon and to make it white. So that might be something new. This is, um, it's there and I keep it there. Maybe when I'm on Arch Linux, for instance, I'll use it. But the fix that's in here is already on the ISO. So the Arch Linux has already this. So there's no need to run it, but um, Oh, I see an error here. Good, 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 good. So copy pasting toolbar icons original, make them bug up there. This thing is here wrong. So we need to fix this one. Uh, what would that be? What number should that be? Always good to have something that goes wrong. So you see how to fix it. But screen settings, that's this thing. Screenshots settings installed here. That's the line that's coming from here. Let's open it with Atom. Yeah, good. So that's the last line, screenshot settings installed. So the next line is 920. 920 is wrong. Copy, pasting, etc. Move, 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 move. And I made this. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How did I, why did I do that? So this needs to go. Save. That's better. So, you know, what, ha what happened here? CP. Wanted to copy, it seems. I forgot something. Yeah, I suppose I think I know what happened here. So, CP needs to be here. Save. Copy everything that's in here, yeah, to everything that's in there. Sounds good. So 920. Now, there is something new I've done. Maybe I'll test it out as well. Normally we say, let's type this kind of line, right? But with my idea that I had a few days ago, I can type 920 like this. My Nemesis scripts, so your after installation scripts, can be reachable just by typing the number anywhere. That's the goal. That's the idea. So if I run this one, it's going to be installed like this. He can't find simple screen. screen. Ah, yeah. yeah, of course, that's normal. Why? Because it ran already. It moved already these these things and it can't move it again right so if you move it once it has been changed to a different file called backup so he's trying to find it the second time in trying to find this file but this has been moved already so that's normal all right so that's fixed um so what you do afterwards later on is you push it back to the net after every test and over every installation these scripts get better and better and better and you push it back to the net and after, uh, well, next installation, it's fixed again. And it's getting better. Okay. So auto start edit, telegram edit. This is normal. This is our boot grub audit and then the fonts. So this is a folder or an, an, a script for and it contains a, well, there is a folder with fonts and it's going to be copy pasted over so that all the fonts for the conkeys are available. Also those guys, those guys that are, well, copyright restricted. So that's the one, those I can't put on the ISO, but I can put it on GitHub and just install it like that. For personal use, you're right. And that's well, the copyright rule. Not to be distributed. That's more an ISO thing. 
fonts have been copied and loaded, Nemesis in patch and in path. I mean, that's the thing that's gonna make, that's new. That's the thing that's going to um, make sure that my pathway, I can actually go to echo and ask the path. This is my path. I've added home Eric data Arch Linux Nemesis. Not only that one, but also home Eric data Arch Linux personal. So all the scripts that are on these two folders are also part of the Linux system. So normally you go to uh, user local bin and user bin and bin and stuff like that. But I've included also the Nemesis just a few days ago. I thought, hey, that would be a great idea just to uh, start typing 999 up and install the settings for X11 Intel only for SSD, not VirtualBox. And that's the script. That's the last script I'll do. You know, I make a lot of YouTube tutorials and it's not easy to find the right combination for your hardware to not have glitches. So that's my attempt for every um, well desktop we have. How do I set it so I don't have glitches on my recording? And that's this specifically for Intel. There is no Nvidia near here. I will never do that. It's a graphical card on the main board or the motherboard that I'm using. All right. So that's interesting, right? Uh, it's a new idea to had. And that means also that the next one, for instance, we've been having issues with Arch Linux lately. Uh, he's, he's going to wait for some reason. We were actually very proud that Arch Linux was shutting down like one, two seconds, boom, it was down. If we compare it with Windows, it's a phew, right? So we were happy with that. And suddenly there were, well, there's a reason for him to just say light DM session or whatever. Sometimes he doesn't say anything, 90 seconds countdown until he shuts down. But we found it. And so the 998, is the one that's going to help us. And that's uh, the reboot to zero seconds again. So fast shutdown or reboot. That's what we need, that's what we like, that's what we love. No frustrations, we found the solution. So basically you can say anywhere on any system, as long as I have Nemesis installed and the scripts, I just say quickly 999 and install settings or 998, disable, make sure that I have a fast reboot, done. Reboot to say uh, zero seconds, 997, everything just going to work. So that's the idea that I had. All right, I think we're through. So he's asking me, which one do you need? I'm gonna take one. And this is Arch Linux XFC Openbox i3. And the only thing I need to do is now reboot because remember we had this new kernel that we had. And uh, basically, I don't think I can tell you any more about um, this, but yeah, sure I can. I can always tell more, but the next thing I'll do after the reboot, what's gonna happen, Dropbox will boot up, InSync will boot up, WhatsApp will be there, Discord will be there, Telegram will be there, and they're all asking the login and the password. And after that, you just walk away, let everything sync, and your uh, software or files or application, whatever that's on your cloud is going to go back to your system. And what I often do is a partial sync. I say, okay, I don't need everything on my drive, on my eh, cloud service, just that folder, that folder to test out Qtile or to test out this or that. So that's um, a way, one way to make sure that everything is, is the way you like it put your settings somewhere in a folder and copy paste it over after an installation and you'll get a premium system after a few installations and, and tweak your well scripts every month and you'll get to a system that you say, this is it, this is what I want. All right, enjoy scripting. <laughs>